Hi viewers, and this is uh, Devlog Free, and um, was a bit of husky voice there. Sorry. Um, so this is the Devlog for uh, Ice Cold Beer, the digital version of the arcade game that I'm building. Also building a um, actual physical version that I will cover at a later time once I've started actually building it. I haven't actually built it yet. I've got more in. Evolved into into the actual digital version because it's uh, I would say it's a lot easier, but it's it's there. It's by the side of me. I can dip in and out of it rather than going downstairs and start hammering on or drilling holes, etc., etc. Anyway, so this is the prototype. I'm using Phaser Dulce Gas, and let's just start it. Hit spacebar to start, and off we go, so exactly the same. I actually fixed the arm with a rotational. So if I press Q and I'm pressing Q and A here, and you can see that the bar is rotating up and down and pivoting on the right hand side here. And if I press L and P, it actually pivots on the left hand side here rather than pivoting on the middle. So that at the moment is not 100% mathematically correct. I've got to use some, I, I'm using actually making an illusion of this moving by using um, some code that I can just jump into here actually. Jump into this code. Where is it? Oh, that was a good guess. There we go. Keyboard input. So I basically changed the arm rotation and depending on what way which um, if I'm pressing left or right I have a minus y position by a set amount or increment the y position a set amount so you get that whole rotation and move and makes the illusion that the actual arm is working correctly um, I've worked out how to do this by tr uh, via trig so I don't have to worry about screen sizes etc etc uh, using the the old uh, power move Sototoa I can't even say it now what we got learnt which you got learnt at school in, probably in trigonometry if not well worth looking up that will actually solve many of your issues with uh, with trig and I've used it a lot a lot of times all to do with working out whether you're using sin, cos or tan to actually work out the angles to actually correctly get the actual uh, um, distances and rotations you need to actually uh, move your objects, but yeah, well worth a go. So, so that's the basic keyboard input. Well, now I'm here in here. I might as well talk about the code. As said before, I've now moved from Matter.js to Phaser.js. Phaser 3.2. 3.2. Three point two two. Don't want that. Get rid of that. So look, three two. I've got so much open here. Uh, there we go. So yeah, three point two two point zero. So calling it, uh, pulling it in via CDN on just deliver without the e. And this starting.html is basically the same, so pulling the holes.data.js and winning holes.data.js as, as in the previous video. Nothing's changed around there. And then we jump into the games.js. So, more or less the same with the consts there. And I've got a world bound wire that's the game height which is 600 times 4 so we're scrolling up and down and that is dealt with um, using matter.world in there so I'm telling the phaser that I'm using matter and there's a world bounds wire there for the scroll to allow us to uh, set our world and I've got camera.main.startfollow 
the arm, my arm, which is the metal pole. And I've got a bit of a follow offset, so I don't actually follow it, follow it exactly in the middle of the screen, so it's offset slightly. Um, so we can see plenty of screen in front of the arm, or above the arm, basically. Uh, and that sorts out the scrolling for you. So yeah, so uh, face is quite cool because it's done on ca camera based. So you just say, point the camera towards an object and go follow it once you set your bounds. And all the scrolling is done for you, which is quite nice. Um, face also has a uh, few, it's a, in its life cycle, it has a number of functions. So it's got preload where you load in all your assets and they are aliased up here. So arm, ball, mark, hole. I list those up. So the all self explanatory, except for this one, this marker touches tells me which hole that I am my designated next hole to target, which I've got to get the ball in. The preload the crate there is when the actual um, scene gets created. So, sorry, yeah, sorry, when the game gets created, the actual games game itself works off of uh, a number of scenes. So, I've got a school ball scene here and a, and a main game scene, which is this itself. And the main game scene controls the game, and the school ball scene controls, well, controls the scoreboard, and there's functions within there to actually update that scoreboard itself. So if I jump to that scoreboard, there we go, so this is a scoreboard, so it's just a phaser scene. Again, um, it has its preload and create functions. So any assets I want to pull into the scoreboard, I can actually pull them in there. Create function just creates a number of labels on screen. So, and also adding the actual game world itself to their, uh, sorry, no, the game world. Actually adding the scoreboard itself to there. So I'll create this rectangle that just sits above. So, because uh, these scenes are transparent, you can see the actual scene, on, the game scene underneath it. So I just put a, uh, opaque um, triangle in there and actually added some text so phasely you just have this diad or text which allows you to add text which is quite nice and position it wherever you want and we've got some uh, I've, I've gone the text label route name in so add a text and the label gets updated and in here got the update function I've got an update hood which I'll pass the uh, We'll have the HUD which I pass the state. So depending on as in the previous log and the previous game, if it's completely game over or a waiting user, I change the text of the message uh, label there. If it's none of those, then we just blank it out. So this other hood is called by the main scene. So as you've seen before. Uh, scoreboard, jump back, there we go, so on create score, this is the actual, uh, uh, yep, it's the main game scene, so create the scoreboard, there, and when I want to update the scoreboard, I just do um, scoreboard.update, Call it from this function here, so this dot update hood hud, so that's on the update function. So that's always been updated there with the scores. So that's how you interact with the scenes just by uh, initializing the scene, creating an instance of it, and then calling functions upon it. They are in which are in their global space basically. So that's nice and easy. Um, not much else has changed with this because it's basically just porting it over to phaser which was more or less straightforward and making it more uh, object based so basically a lot of cleaning that code so as said before we had the preload the create 
let's just create all the arm all the arms and the world itself add the furniture create the whole array same as what we were doing before if I show you this create whole array and you can see how similar it is so create whole uh, da, 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 da. so phaser you can actually create a game object and I'll create that as a sprite so there's a whole a sprite a sprite, a sprite. so that's there and then you give it um, this shape so this is actually this dot matter divide so it's a, mat it's a game object that's add added to matter so I've told phaser to actually use matter that's in the config itself and I've told that I've added a sprite I've, given, I've said what image the actual uh, sprite is and I said what shape or matter shape is so this one's a circle and the usual is static in this sensor from matter.js is there so it's it's more or less the same there's just some slight nuances of how it's uh, put together um, and push those onto the array and that's it that's added to the world then and you can just deal uh, deal with it either by the alias or with these they're just uh, they're just static on there so that's quite nice just um, add them and leave them and the actual ground left one right well are actually uh, rectangles actually get added to the world just get filled once and then all the rest is uh, dealt with by phaser so this phaser.gm for rectangle this got graphics or fill style fill shape and then that's it just just let's call this once and it's oops it's done so yeah on the crate now that's it and this is never updated again this is just left and it's phaser deals with it um, here's my update function and that's got the same state engine in there with the lost ball busy and score etc etc et so nothing no major difference in there so and that's really about it yeah it's just been uh, made a bit ob more object orientated and it's just the uh, the switch over to, fa to from matter.js to phaser which after a bit of reading a bit of reading up a few uh, a few following a few examples it was wasn't too hard at all it was actually quite an enjoyable experience so yeah so uh, that's that in the next video what I'll do is I'll actually well I'll what I'm gonna do is actually move to ESX style classes and do a bit more cleaning up get some graphics in there do a bit of experimentation um, oh yeah that's one thing that I have done I have experimented with ScreenFlow so I need to know how to get from a title to, to game to game over screen and then back again so I've done this ScreenFlow tutorial well not tutorial well um, demo here that I've put together a bit of a demo code so ScreenFlow has got a preload screen, a title screen, scoreboard, game, game over. So those are the scenes and obviously a main.js for the main scene. No, that main.js isn't the main scene. What's that? I think that's the entry point. Yeah, main.js is the entry point. So in here it sets up a number of scenes. Uh, so if I look at some of these scenes like the game.js uh, done this in in ESX style classes so it looks much neater in the ESX style class um, and much more easy to follow so I'll be uh, changing in the next period I'll do I'll be upgrading to it uh, phaser ESX well the next prototype will be more or less the, the gain to completion really 
um, might move to node uh, to allow for like unit testing and all that but I'm not quite sure yet so no I will you need to move to node because I'm gonna have to actually port this onto devices and etc so I'll, yeah, I'll be moving to node uh, so yeah um, create so creating a scene each time and I've got a button in there that actually just swaps the scene so it's just a stop and start scene so I allow myself to uh, be able to change from one scene to the other by clicking on a button and if I go into the game over scene you can see here when game over scene is shown it has a title saying game over and then click to restart the game and the good thing with the text elements you can add obviously it's, obviously it's JavaScript and allows you to add an on-click event to that so point it down click button and this scene dot start game scene and that automatically starts that scene and we just join that scene and away we go and yeah so this is a quick quick quickly put this together to get an idea of actually how scenes work I've got a bit of preload JS in here. This is a preloader, so I'll get a nice little um, preload uh, animation for all my assets coming in. So this is just a test one at the moment, allowing me to. I've actually hijacked this from someone else's code, so it's not all my own work. But I'll just show you how all this is put together if I can jump to it so let's have a look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we're going in uh, tile screen flow there we go okay so this one that's loading all the assets in so that's loaded a number of images in there now welcome to the game all right all, all right for first Oh, right, welcome to the game. Once it's loaded, click to continue. So click. So welcome to the title screen with cache graphics. So this is a graphic that graphic that has been cached. There, just checking that. So there. So there's a scoreboard being updated. So there's a scoreboard in here. Click to go to game over scene. Game over. Click to restart the game. So there we go. So learn how scene flow works so that's all good so I can actually start getting some titles title screens in this for the finished game but that'll come last so that's it so the next thing is to look at tile maps start getting the game actually parts of the game implemented fully uh, graphics sound sound would be good so that's the next stuff I'm going to do. That's it. And I hope you enjoyed this devlog up. Devlog? Devlog? Yeah, de devlog. Devlog update. And I'll see you in the next, next one. It should be coming shortly.